The Alien Within, currently on show at Malmö Kunsthall, it's an exhibition that takes inspiration from Malmö's social fabric. Um, when I came to work in Malmö, I realized that it's, uh, even though a very small city, it has a very interesting social fabric, very cosmopolitan. Uh, in fact, a third of its inhabitants is born abroad, and uh, this is a um, trend actually currently on the rise. And it has also a very interesting history of immigration occurred over several decades and uh, with the turmoils that occurred uh, across the world in 2014 it has been actually a place where a lot of people have arrived uh, from these different locations across the world uh, in full turmoil and uh, political and socially speaking. Um, it is also a question uh, it tries also to connect a little bit with a uh, certain idea of uh, artistic practice uh, that tries to um, define what means alienating, uh, that tries to define what is a master of alienation as well. In the first place, um, the idea of the title comes uh, from uh, the idea of basically seeing from a very different perspective how alienation uh, is a subject of artistic practice uh, for different people, uh, from different artists and scholars uh, that define this through discussions around border, nationality, uh, but also through the idea of what is uh, this chaotic cosmos that makes up uh, the 21st century and its social structures. In fact, uh, one of the ground questions about the exhibition is uh, how can we imagine a forward-thinking ideal 21st century um, so Western society that is based currently, in my view, uh, on the current use and politicization of fear. <laughs> وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين And um, there is an artist around which the exhibition is staged and there's an artist um, in, that has been rarely seen actually in Scandinavia. Um, it's uh, Christoph Schlingensif, um, someone that is actually difficult to define in some ways because his practice was actually um, centered around the fact that it was collapsed also to traditional media, uh, whether it was filmmaking, whether it was theatre, whether it was opera, whether it was visual arts. He's a figure that is relatively unknown in Scandinavia whereas it's very well known in German-speaking context. And uh, in my view, actually, he was a sort of master of alienation in the sense of how he came to work in different practices, how he actually managed to collapse them, but also how, in some ways, as an artist, was able to um, be political without claiming to be a political artist, um, and at the same time also be an artist without claiming to be fully a visual artist in the first place. And um, the exhibition actually has been brought up by uh, my close work and partnership with the Goethe Institute that generally supported the exhibition. And it also has been brought together by uh, the close collaboration with Aino Labyrinth and the estate of uh, Christo Schlingensif. Uh, they have been um, basically informing me a lot about the status of um, his work currently. Um, but also made me aware of the fact that uh, this is a particularly rare occasion um, as an exhibition since uh, actually Schlingensif didn't really produce so many works and uh, a lot of them that he produced were destroyed and actually what is surviving him are very few large-scale installations that have been surviving in its own totality. 
One of them is the animatograph, which takes center stage in the exhibition, which has been kindly lent by um, the Thyssen Bonamitsa Art Contemporary Foundation in Vienna. And um, uh, this piece, um, it's a 500 square meters multimedia installation, and uh, it basically tries to give a full representation of 21st century um, chaotic cosmos of, uh, and social structures. Um, he has a rotating stage in the middle of it, uh, which in some ways is a kind of, uh, can be read as a sort of metaphor for um, many different things. Uh, one of them, how our social structures are constantly moving and uh, moving forward and at the same time also impermanent. At the same time, is also a kind of metaphor for the whole issue about parliamentarism and how and if this could be seen as the origin and also the end of it. And um, it is also a fusion of different myths and traditions and religions uh, that are, have somehow uh, antagonistic terms with each other and at the same time they fuse together within this kind of very chaotic cosmos. One of the interesting parts about this piece, which was uh, for me the very center of the exhibition, was the idea how this um, can be turned as a possibility of a stage for uh, allowing other voices to um, come in dialogue with it, but at the same time also try to neutralize its effect, to kind of create a sort of kind of antagonism with it. And uh, this comes actually from the idea that Schlingensiv had of the animatograph, which would be a sort of work that would basically uh, collect and at the same time discharge uh, information from the different places where it would be each time shown. Be shown. Um, in some ways it functioned effectively like a film in its own editing process. Uh, but of course uh, this staged or like executed or represented in a kind of three-dimensional uh, sculptural sense. Um, so since, of course, uh, Schlingensiv is no longer alive, since I felt that as a curator of this project I would never be able to ask artists effectively to uh, put themselves alongside his work, inside his own work, I felt that would have been not maybe uh, much of a curatorial integrity in suggesting that to other practitioners. Um, so my idea was to basically try to create a think tank um, that would go alongside it, uh, where there would be a series of artists, international and Swedish artists and scholars that at different times during the exhibition would be basically promoting their ideas that tangentially are, have the same common interests as the ones of portrayed in the animatograph and in general by Schlingensiv's practice. And, um, and try to see how these sort of balance each other out or at the same time sort of um, create also productive encounters. A sort of tension provoked um, of a basically face-to-face -face situation. Among the ones that I invited there are for instance some um, local practitioners because that was very important for me since this is how I imagine also Schlingensiv would have worked if he had been still alive. And for this reason I asked, for instance, um, an independent theatre group called Institute to, to participate in the exhibition. They have been actually sort of taking over a space um, in a kind of parafictional sense and they use it as their own base uh, for the duration of the exhibition, intermittently organizing series of exhibitions and also events and also um, theatre performances and concerts. Uh, so are very, very active. And at the same time, I have invited, for instance, an artist that has been rarely seen in Scandinavia, uh, the Cuban, New York-based artist, Tania Bruguera, who will be coming and staying in Malmo for three months and work uh, in a neighborhood of the city called Lindengen, uh, where its inhabitants are actually predominantly foreign. And she will be basically trying to produce a work in relation to the exhibition by being active in this area. <laughs> 